Well, uh, our hope was that we would have uh, what one person called it an emergent democracy, that this, the internet would be a sort of an agora, a commons, where we could all discuss our different views and the common good, and we could have a participatory democracy instead of the representative democracy we had, and we'd all work together to make the right decisions for the society and for our community and so on. So what's happened has been something quite different from that. What we have is a system that's very easy to manipulate, that players that we don't understand or who have, uh, who have negative, um, uh, that have, have some sort of negative plan for us or have some agenda um, are able to come in and use this to influence people and, and, uh, and actually influence not just the things we buy, but actually the way we vote. And an, an example of that is using um, selective targeting to depress the vote. So, for example, you tell, uh, for example, black voters that Hillary Clinton is no good, that, that you know, and, and convince them that all politicians are the same. And then it's not that they go and vote for Donald Trump or whoever, it's that they just don't bother voting, voting at all. And this is quite an easy trick to, to, to manipulate a democracy. So this is the challenge we have to we have to uh, to deal with is that there are many positive things, many positive aspects to to um, social media and online systems and so on, but there are many serious problems and it's difficult to, and we have to find ways to address them if we're going to get the benefit. Um, we we certainly like to believe it, and I suppose we're like the um, we're like Neo in the film The Matrix. You know, we we believe we're li we're living in one kind of world, but if we are prepared to swallow the red pill, uh, we can see that maybe th maybe the world is very different in terms of our information is not our own. Our information about us is being traded and brokered on an international basis as part of a you know a, a, a massive money system and um, our attention is being bought and sold. So advertising is targeted at us in ways that we don't really understand. Sometimes it's obvious, we can see why we're seeing a particular ad, but sometimes we don't understand at all. Um, and when you look at it that way, it does seem like our self-determination, our individuality is, is um, not even been, just been taken away with, from us, but actually turned into a commodity, which is actually just being bought and sold as part of commerce. I think the internet is like, uh, it's a technology, the same as motorized road transport um, or, or electrical equipment or anything else. There have to be rules, there have to be standards. And we, we have to figure out what, what, the right way to, um, what the right way to enforce these is. So one part of it is law. So, you know, there are laws about how we, how we act on the, how we behave on the road. But mostly we don't, we, there's social reasons why we obey those laws as well as the reasons to, to, to do it. The fact that we might, we might see a policeman or a policeman might see us. Um, so we have to set up that social framework so that we have, I suppose, good behaviour on the internet, but that we don't set up a, frame, a framework that's just oppressing the benefits um, and so for that, for example, oppresses free speech.